Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, the show where a couple of visual storytellers get together to take on various topics that tend to happen, uh, tend to get in, in one's path when one goes on that path of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Oh, hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger, a user experience designer and a, a coach and creator of interactive experiences. Mm. Mm. That, that's pretty tidy. That's a pretty tidy introduction for yourself. Oh, well, thanks. I make it up every single time. <laughs> so run through it again. Let's see if we can get like get some muscle oh, memory. Gosh. <laughs> well, let's see. So I'm a UX designer and okay. I... Nope. Got... It's nope off a cliff. Let's do instant Ooh. replay. Yeah. So no, I, I'm UX designer, a coach, and I create inter interactive experiences, and uh, that's that means that um, yeah, I can I can help uh, coach individuals or teams to to do more user centric things, to involve their audience, what they make, that whole idea of product co creation type stuff, and engage in sort of um, you know brave kind collaboration with with themselves and their audience, and that's something that you can apply to your own uh your own career and you know do some planning and whatnot so you can hire me individually or with your team and uh, mm. i also make this make stuff that helps support that um things that i think will end up coming up today in the in the Actually, our main topic yeah. we, well and we tend to pick topics that have a lot to do with the kind of work that we're doing because that that's the stuff we can speak the most readily to. So if you go back in the archives at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash leanintoart, you will find topics like today's and tons and tons about comics and mini comics. Um, last week, whoops, what did I just do? I just like monkeyed with my desktop and I went to the other desktop. There we go. Okay. That's what I meant to do. I meant to show... Uh, last week's episode, episode 298, Learning from Professional Adventures in 2019. So we took a look back at how the year went for us um, as a modeling exercise of like how do we review and, um, you know, reflect on and, and, you know, mine our journaling from uh, a year of adventures to think about how we're going to move forward. Now we're in episode 299, the penultimate episode to 300. Thinking about what's going to happen in 2020. So now it'll be a modeling exercise of how do we think about and plan for another year? Quick question before we dive in. And I'm I'm tempted to not ask this, but I'm equally tempted to ask this. I think the 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 the, the little creature on my shoulder that's saying, do it, do it, do it, is 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 overpowering the one who's saying, caution, caution. Is it too late? We are at January 9th, Rob. I didn't do my resolutions in time you know, bail out. You didn't come up with a plan. I guess you're winging it the entire year. <laughs> sure. Um, I guess it depends on where and how you live. I'm not sure. Do you have, do you have some sort of formal arrangement where, where this is, um, uh, you've either chosen or, or, or trapped in a situation where, where this is, you know, you're stuck. I mean, if you if you have a chance to do some thinking about what you intend to to bring about in the future, I'm pretty sure you can hack around that. So, I don't know about the too late thing. Just depends on your rituals, how you feel about it, and uh, yeah, just call it something different. I guess if you have uh, if you have a goals warden that that's that's saying like too late, you didn't turn in your homework, you just say like <laughs> I I have intentions. <laughs> no goals. Well, no goals here. And friend of the show, Dave Say, uh, Dave Shri Shri Say, um, but Dave Say dot com has for years been doing the Groundhog's Day resolutions, where he actually doesn't. He uses January as the time to reflect and get ready to do the actual planning of the year on February second, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think he recently did some writing where he might be setting down that practice. He's been doing yeah. it for a long time. I think it was um, almost a decade, if not a, a decade. Great, yeah. So many cool articles and uh, like just how Dave thinks about uh, setting himself up to succeed with what he wants to bring about. That's, that's pretty great. So whatever mechanism you use to bring, um, to, to, to bring yourself through that circumstance, it's one of those things where like we hinted at it last didn't hint at it like you joked in the beginning about the the calendar calendar being arbitrary or what have you and i jumped on you i was like ah 
you, there's a nerve and you stepped on it. Uh, no, it, it wasn't that bad, but it was, it was, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of big feelings that, that you can get tenuous. I know. I mean, I can too. I mean, the, as much as I get into goal planning, it's, um, it's not like a simple instant, no cost process, even for someone, even for me, and that could be my own quirks. So maybe there's folks who it's goals are no biggie, whatever. That's great. Um, and there's, but definitely, I think you were hinting at the other point of view where goals are sort of just why, right? It's not valuable. There's too much, there's, there's just too much too. It's too much pressure, too much expectation, too much uh, chaos in the world to how do you, um, how do you work with that? Mm -hmm. And um, all I can say is that if you believe in your own agency and some have some level of uh, confidence and willingness to explore your desires for what you want to have happen next uh, in your experience and the people that you connect with and all any kind of commitment, relationship, circumstance, anything you can think of like, well, it's this way now. What's the next thing? if you want. And it's possible to then mm, work with and against and around the stuff, the chaos, the weather, the things that get in the way. It is possible to deal with. And all of us can be in different circumstances of, of you know, better or worse fortune, uh, more or less privilege, but it's still, um, we have the ability to imagine a different future so why not make that into something clear enough to plant a flag and then go toward it and you can notice if something's pulling you away from it or what have you a feedback an intention plus a feedback loop and ongoing action is is powerful and i feel that i'm not uh, i'm not alone in that and i like to celebrate it i don't like to shove it down people's throats um but i'm just here sharing my my own experience as an example And that's and that's our that's our cue to get to the first part of the show. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we use little musical interstitials to, to signal when we're in different sections of the show. We do the show in two parts with a couple little breaks in between. First part of the show is well, what how are we thinking about our goals for 2020? Um, I'm really curious if you could go first because you you framed up some interesting thoughts as far as like coming up with a why as well, like before you tee up what you're going to do, like you're establishing why are we going to do this? What's my mission? Um, which is a little bit more abstract than like the actual thing you're going to do. Um, much like looking at a... Um just, I don't know, you get a catalog for something that you like. I don't, it seems like this year catalogs became in again and markers. Really? Like, I don't, they were for us. Like more, huh. we, we received um, more catalogs than in previous years. And I think it's probably one of those things where in the marketing industry, a couple of um, cool catalogs happened last year. And so, mm. you know, guess who uses goals? Also, people in companies. I'm guessing there's there's a little bit of the, let's use that for good idea as well. Now that you mention it, I do remember getting an Amazon catalog and it came with like a, a page of stickers for kids to like put stickers near the things that they actually, that they wanted for the holidays. I do, do remember getting that, but I don't remember getting anything else. Yeah. It's funny. I don't like, uh, let's see, I'm going to backhanded critique it just being, just owning it. Um, okay. It's funny where some catalogs have a point of view and I found that one had less of a point of view um, mm -hmm. because there was an, a hodgepodge in the, at least what the version we, we received. I would not be surprised if there was a, um, a set of AB tests and planning around mm -hmm. populations receiving one catalog or another and then what things they actually did order or act upon. I would imagine product owners at Amazon are thinking through that and doing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, they, that's, that's their jam. And it's so, I don't know which, if we were in column A or column B, but the catalog we had was very hodgepodge. Like, so it had a lot of kid stuff, but then would have, it would have things that were, weren't as kid stuff on there. Nothing like, um, I don't know, like, a, I don't know. I don't, I'm making stuff up like, a, 
like a garden scythe or something being on a <laughs> kid's toy page or whatever. But it was just like mundane things, just not as exciting, not as much inspiration and not presented in a <laughs> setting of the, of a desirable, like playful future. Right. So it wasn't sort okay. of the GI Joe aircraft carrier, which I never had growing up. Um, set yeah. up with so many toys from that franchise and other franchises where you were like, <gasps> And yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see that catalog and you're like yep 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 it's all wantable and desirable and exciting and i think uh goals can be like that too where you you know you can imagine a future where there's there's you you can you uh, you can just say give me all the goals like you like list the category in my life yeah boom here's a big goal here's five big goals let's go and you can just sort of shop and and uh uh shop with your eyes like in a catalog and pile things on, but then having principles or a filter or a budget or something criteria mm -hmm. to say like, these are the ones that are more fitting in and harmon harmonious and helping one another, or at least have not, not having too many opposites in the, in the whole collection of goals. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's the idea of like, I have like the why or the mission kind of thing. And even that is more, is a, is a draft. Um, so I have, what I have to answer your question, uh, I uh, this is so it's so rough draft. What I have is spread human centered design through coaching, teaching, and encouraging makers and teams to work with their audience and each other in radically collaborative ways to bring meaningful products in the world made by great teams serving the audience they in, are involved with and create for. So something like that. Okay. That's, this over and it's like that's the professional side there's more to it like i i have uh, other work in progress but just sort of filtering for this episode creative goals and the second half of our episode too mm -hmm. so how, why what's uh what's your reaction to that why um that seems well it, it's it's just it's interesting to me because you are you have a statement there that makes an explicit agenda for how you want to interact with the world. Well, like, what do you want the work that you do to ultimately do with the world? Um, I, and I realized as I was writing out my goals, I think that's implicitly in everything that I'm doing. Like I, I chunked my, my work this coming year into three categories, teaching advocacy and making comics. Um, and, uh, and I mean, advocacy has that implicitly big, you can't advocate unless you are <laughs> changing the world somehow, right? But I didn't explicitly write out that. And it got me just thinking about like, yeah, and, and we're going to talk about your new workshop with, with that you made with Kate um, later on in the show. I was engaging with the the, the workshop and the, um, the uh, what is it? It's it's a hand handbook. Workbook? The workbook. Thank you. Gosh, why did I blank on that? Workbook. How many times did I said that word in my life? Probably zillions. Why was I blanking on it? I don't know. But anyway, yes, the workbook. I was I was engaging with that as well. And I'm realizing that like that's something that I hadn't I hadn't tackled that aspect of my goal planning. So when I saw that you had it in there, I was like, yep, let's let's underline that. I think that's interesting. Is like establishing a mission. Now, question. Did mission come before or did it emerge as a result of examining the things you want to do? It's very, um, it's a, it's a recursive puzzle. Um, because I think it's sort of, it comes out when it comes out for me in this process, I followed the path, the pattern of the where next journal, um, mm -hmm. this year. And, uh, uh, so what came first? It was probably more the, I, th yeah, I guess it would be through the life in five exercise, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah so there's some theme but that's a combination it's it's a little bit of like the greatest hits intentions the greatest hits ball of intentions for the scope of five years and then um also i've been doing so much business development the last this last year and you know in, in uh, marketing and branding and um and strategy for the combination of what I'm working on, which is making teaching and coaching. And that's, uh, so I, I guess it's tough to say because that's been so fresh. And so what I had was just kind of, um, even what I wrote in this, in our show notes, it came out of 
just iterating on what I had in my already existing notes in my workbook, right? Okay. Where I'm like, I see something here. I want every time I write it, I want it to be more clear and stronger and um, hit at some kind of essential thing where uh, like, I want to react to it. I want to say like, I, once I hear myself say it, I want to go, oh yeah, I think I'm at a pretty stable point now and I haven't hit that yet. Okay. Kind of like when I introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's worth modeling too right because like this is one of those things where um it's it, it's kind of semi-related to like so i've got a nerve that you can step on really easily and it's to expect an 18 year old to know what they want to do with their lives right like when somebody leans into like somebody graduating high school now what are you gonna do with your life you know uh it's i think it's absolutely unfair and nonsense to ask somebody with so little perspective on the world to say, how are you going to change the world, make it better? You can have a sense of it. You can have an idea. You can have a, uh, an, an intimation of what you want to do, but you don't know until you've actually engaged with the world in some kind of meaningful way. What it, You have to discover it. It has to evolve, right? Like that's my experience at any rate. So I think it's worth modeling that like, yeah, even people with a lot of experience are constantly massaging this thing. It's 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 like putty. You're constantly noodling with it, um, and then to to the person who's like, "But oh, that's scary because I wanted to be fully formed and have all my decisions made for me by like the the the, the lizard brain." Um, it's like, well, but then that means that you're guaranteed an interesting experience because you're always discovering and learning and evolving, right? So, well, and I think. Uh, so we may come from a similar enough background where we have a similar enough com or we, we may have some common ground there where I do think mm -hmm. some folks have a lot more, um, you know, sort of concrete building block where it's like, yeah. I, it's, you know, like th there's a, a professional core that's more stable, what have you. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of what I do like this, I, you know, it existed in some forms like, uh, like, so if you combine sort of technology and psychology and, uh, creative engineering, it for sure existed at Xerox Park, right in the seventies. But e it was would be more and more general before that, right? And there's mm -hmm. been different instances of it since. And now there's many in, in different forms throughout throughout the world and whatnot. But like earlier in my career, I couldn't have said this. So yeah. But and and many, but yet this has existed for long enough where there are folks who are into user experience design and whatnot that are very specialized because the the that kind of um, maturity has happened in the environment since. Mm. So we exist sure. in parallel, and with um, you know some of us going, I don't know, I'm figuring it out. And some of us like, I got. I don't know. I I I could also make a pushback argument that even though I have this concise cartoonist and teaching artist, well, what does teaching artists mean? That can mean a lot of different things too. Do I teach at the college level? Do I, uh, you know, teach with like, uh, doing workshops around the country and doing speaking tours in conjunction with a book? Or do I do something that's more, you know, intimate and, uh, recurring with like a local art, small, you know, um, art center kind of institution, you know, and, and, and that can change over time, right? Like the teaching artist name can encompass a lot of different things. And I can choose to change my focus as, as I, as the environment will allow me and as my interests dictate. Right. So, so I don't know. So even, much flexibility. Even, <laughs> there's a lot of flexibility. Let's celebrate that. Let's that's celebrate like flexibility. That's awesome. <laughs> Very attractive trap. So let's talk about your, with that vision in mind of the, the why mission, spread, spreading human-centered design through coaching, teaching, encouraging makers and teams to work with their audience and each other in radically collaborative ways. What does that mean? What kind of things are, what kind of goals, creative goals do you have as a result of that? Or not as a okay. result of that, but, you know, being informed by that. Uh, let's see. I will try to be brief because I want to make sure we have pr plenty of time to go through your goals, okay? Okay. The last episode, I was not brief. Uh <laughs> And he yeah. bogarted at everybody. I did. <laughs> no, he didn't. I, I was very interested in what you were saying, and I kept asking leading questions. But continue. it was like being too. We were we were dancing on the dance floor, and I had all the big sloppy <laughs> dance moves. And you're like, "Well, you need some space for that." 
what you have going on. We have different characterizations of last episode. Okay, fair but, enough. I know, I'm joking. <laughs> so, all right. Make, teach, and coach. Okay. And it's an interesting hybrid of things that just, I, I just do it because I believe in it, right? So when I, the, the making is a, is a combination of, of sort of tools, games, and art. Um, this, it's a combination of, um, gosh, there's such a puzzle with, with in all these kerfuffles that pop up social networking wise with, with, you know, um, what did I, I wrote in my journal recently. Um, let's see. Hobbies versus hustle is like the new, um, hallows versus horcruxes. Anyway, um, that I, I don't, I don't get the. Yeah, I don't get the reference. I haven't, I haven't read all the books. <laughs> Hobbies versus hustle. So, like, I got a mix, and I'm 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 not ashamed. It's it, that's a thing where like I'm energized by things that like one day if I accidentally slip and make money with one of my hobbies things, fine, bring it. They're great, and I take I take them seriously enough for that. And yet, whatever. So, because because there's comics and zines are in my sort of hobby bundle. Got a few different zines and comics I want to make. Um, interactive installations that's still in that so you even behind me you see the the cardboard tree in progress i podcasted about that during the art sound off mm -hmm. uh, you see like it has these jaggy jaggedy teeth because it was going to be a halloween tree and now it's, got it's the not in the shot it's not in the shot because the way i got the it's video the split shot. right oh you gotta you gotta move your fine. camera are you sure all right we can see Whoop. see the tree kind nope. of nope nope i see your guitars ah there it is there it is there it There's is, the upper left-hand corner, everybody. <laughs> All right. And I dropped my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm the one who was encouraging right. you to mess around with your camera. And we got some, How are we All, right. All right. Anyway, my back? I have no idea. Yeah, you're back. Okay. Anyway, so there's combination hobbies, hustles, games, of course. Guitar Fredder is Chifa in there, and I'm excited to get the new get Guitar Fredder Deluxe into the world. Certainly. Um, working away on that so as a as one of my major projects so you got like major minor projects hobbies um business all intermixed in make right mm. tools would be journals and worksheets stuff like that and then teach i'm doing that through podcasting and uh writing and doing um workshops um and possibly um well ebooks and tbd um uh, like published books, we'll see. Put together mm -hmm. a pitch or two this year. Yep. And um, yeah, so that's a big part of what I do. This, it's you know, I can't throw out either one. It's it's that's part of the, my my core business. And uh, then the coaching as well, which is a combination of um, live sessions and also just arrangement arrangements for being there for individuals and teams, which could be seminars or sessions, one offs or retainer packages group labs, uh, paid tutoring, and actually um, volunteer mentoring. Like I'm currently in, involved in volunteering for the uh, uh, University of Minnesota Product Design School. That's awesome that you do that. That is so great. Um, and that, yeah, that's one of my biases that people who, you know, like uh, donate their time to help mentor young people are like among my fa very favorite people. Because um, gosh, how much would we have loved that when we were that age, right? Anyway, it helps a lot. I mean, and, and it, it, yeah, it helps based on where anyone's at and uh, it's not this prescriptive, you know, swooping in with like, Oh, look at this. I've got Ted talks. Boo, boo, boo. I've got, you know, my own, you know, bundled anecdotes here they come, you know, no, it's, it's just talking through and listening and things come up, but it's, having it's someone to, it's patiently watching Luke get zapped by the little remote thing on in the in the Falcon's cargo hold, you know, and just gently nudging. Stretch out with your feelings. Keep, oh, you got stuck again. That's too bad. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's great. I I um I enjoy it. It's um, yeah. It's not. Uh, it's a good balance of, of um like a like it's a reasonable time commitment, and I've um yeah I believe in it as well. This sounds like there's a lot in here for 365 days, Rob. And so I'm wondering if we could underline that too, that it sounds like there's like a level of exploration that's happening in the list making that you're making right now. Like when you say, oh, coaching, here are things coaching could be, right? 
Yeah. So some of that is building off of known things. And then mm -hmm. uh, for sure, because they're goals, like the, the intent is um, with some amount of maintenance, but when I put together goals, it's typically um, there's an, uh, I try to be inclusive of sustainability and maintenance, but then um, I put attention toward the evolution and adapting and evolving and, and experiments to, to keep growing. What could that turn into? Yeah. So certainly, yeah. yes, that's uh, cause I haven't put together a group coaching product yet. Uh, and I haven't officially offered a retainer package yet, but it's on right. my radar and I will. Yeah. And I, and I didn't see any like hard dates on those items saying like, okay, this is going to happen by August. This is going to happen by December. Um, well, yeah. So as far as the, uh, it's more, I've got some rolling marketing plans that have more uh, hard dates and also have a product, um, a product pipeline separate. So this is just kind of like the list and, mm -hmm. uh, and where does it fall? And then does this, do these endeavors support that mission? Right. And my why, um, so that that's the job of the list, but then to, to put it into like a project pipeline of like, this is what I'm putting my resources in until it ships. This is what I need to get done by this date, that kind of thing. That's a separate thing. Mm, gotcha. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and there's one I forgot to put in here with art where I'm doing, um, I'm doing an experiment that should be done. I think, well, for sure. Um, I hope to have it done by the end of this month. And it's just a um, uh, creative that, so you remember uh, I mentioned uh, what Jock Snem, uh, his, uh, what was his microcast called? It's called Slow Down. Oh, Slow Down. And uh, he put out a call for people who just want to um, uh, you know, playfully collaborate. And he made 33 sentence stories and put a call out for artists to join to just illustrate one. And so mm. I did. And oh, I'm cool. So when did, when did that call happen? I, cause I'm curious about timeline because I'm wondering about how much of your goal planning is emergent. How much of that comes out of like, oh, this is a new thing that popped on my radar this year. It's getting added to the list. And how does that discernment happen? Yeah. So some of it would be um, like a few years back. I, I, I wanted to, let's see. I had things like uh, uh, create prolifically. <laughs> is one of my goals, right? So I need to maintain some amount of capacity for improvising. And so mm -hmm. this kind of fits in there, but it also popped up on my radar at the end of last year. So it's one of those things where it's a commitment I started last year that just gets brought into the goals for this year. Mm, okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, because I'm, I'm trying, I, well, because I mean, the, going back to that joke about the calendar being arbitrary is that like, yeah, we take this moment to stop and like reflect on what, what the, the year ahead is like, but there is stuff that's currently in momentum from the previous year that, that needs to be considered as well. Right. It's not like you're starting like, okay, everything from December 31st, everything's done. <laughs> you know, it's time to start the next thing. Right. At least it's I not that way. For, I guess a lot of the stuff on my list is that too. It's just that I focused on the newness about it. Like the make teaching mm -hmm. coach. I mean, that was, that was becoming solidified in like last July ish. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, and I've been honing and iterating on it ever since. And so of course it's like this foundational thing in my goals, but then this is like building new things on that foundation also. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, inherently it's not about, um, and suddenly the, you know, I have a entirely new career starting January 1st. That would be, said so. that'd be nice and tidy, you know, that'd be mm -hmm. very convenient. Um, but yeah, I, it, my experience has not been th that, um, yeah. So yeah, speaking of your experience, you've, um, and yours has been building for some time as well. That's true. So yes, it's, it's worth, um, noting that in, in my examples that I'm going to use for this episode, this is a, I want to say it's been like a decade of development, right? Um, because I didn't start teaching comics courses until 2000, well, 2006, 2007, that neighborhood. Um, and I didn't really start calling myself a teaching artist till like 2008. 
like that's when that title like slipped into my language before that i was a cartoonist who also does some teaching sometimes but like it's like no i'm doing this a lot now this is like part of my job and i was finally ex understanding and accepting the fact that oh this feeds into my job this like th this is a these are not two parallel but exclusive tracks these are tracks that feed into one another in various ways for lots of reasons but um so and then also 2009 was when i uh co-organized the Kids Read Comics Festival for the first time, thereby becoming not just the teaching artist, but also an advocate for comics by you know, donating my time to this nonprofit organization to develop a comics festival that is now in its 12th year. So, but the comics, that was like my first and foremost self-definition, right? Making comic books is the thing that I care about most. So I've got these three things that ask enough ask for my time in a formal way to such a degree that they are now job descriptions does that make sense that's how i'm thinking about it at any rate like what are things so like i actually don't have any room in here for hobbies and that's 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 kind of a downer because that was something that i really had as a future goal like i would really like to have i would like to learn to play a musical instrument i would like to learn a foreign language um something something build a skill set that is that is outside of the of the um narrow range of interests that i have had up to this point um but as will be you know there, there's there's some there's some new jobs that i'm taking on that have yet to be announced um and when they're announced it'll it'll make it clear but like i'm just not going to have that that capacity and that bandwidth i'm my time is going to be budgeted i just did like a a weekly breakdown of like where my hours are being allotted and i'm like uh i'm right now i'm at a 45 hour work week and i'm like i was trying to keep it under 40 i was trying to do like what regular normal grown-ups do but i'm i was grateful that it wasn't 60 right like when i did the math i'm like okay at least it's not something that's like out of control you know i will have some downtime but anyway um so my my goals my creative goals are mostly work related and um teaching um, one job I did just take that I can talk about is I'm going to be teaching a, a series of comics courses at the Columbus College of Art and Design. And this goes to something that y you have in your notes about this idea of like, well, how can that grow? And like, um, I got, I had a really, really terrific meeting with them where we are super similarly aligned in terms of mission and in terms of how a series of comics courses for young people can be expanded in interesting ways. Like there was a lot of like sort of pie in the sky kind of talking at this meeting and, and a lot of pie in the sky talking that like you know, ro ro uh, rounded back to stuff I was doing in Michigan. So like when they're like, oh, we'd love to do this kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, I actually, I did that in like 2009 in Michigan. You know, what about this thing? Oh yeah, I did something similar to that back in like 2015. Anyway, um, so it's one of those signals that I got from the world of, okay, there is um, a place where I can, I have a lot of flexibility to expand the idea of what being a teaching artist is. And I want to have my eyes open for that. And that in the second half, I'm going to get to like, well, how do I make sure that um, more opportunities like this happen? Um, and then I've got some existing work. Like, so this is work that I was under contract from a year ago. You know, I, I teach comics workshops for the Seriously Coalition back in Michigan. Um, I booked a small number of workshops for the summer, but like back last summer. Um, and then uh, a new thing that came up is I'm actually going to be doing a webinar to for the Ohio Arts Council uh, to train teaching artists how to do a little bit of what I do, which is kind of neat. So there's like that's the teaching stuff. And that's that's all booked. Like I, I, I can't take on any more than what I've already got there. So it's like that was what I was saying last week about like, OK, 2020 is booked as far as teaching work. Um, and then we get advocacy. Well, um, the Ann Arbor Comic Arts Festival will be this June again, you know, the 12th year. And I, as the programming coordinator, I'm going to be, be deeply involved in helping to select guests and helping to assign artists to, uh, create memorable experiences for young people at this festival that I have so much affection for. And then um, since moving to Columbus, this happened last year, and it looks like it's going to expand. I'm going to be involved with the Cartoon Crossroads Columbus Festival in various ways. And so, you know, it, it being a bigger festival, I'm going to have to learn, like, 
more about like last year, you know, I contributed to um, the kids programming track. Looks like that's going to happen again. Um, looking for ways to enrich and nurture it and make it even more robust means that I'm going to have to l spend more time with the organization, learning all the different parts of it and all the different stakeholders and all the different um, uh, partners, you know, and look for places where uh, growth can happen. Like what, 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 where are partnership, where are potential partnerships that they haven't seen yet that maybe I can see with fresh eyes? How can I bring more value? To this organization um so there's advocacy a 2 caf and cxc and then finally am i gonna have any time to make comics let's see <laughs> well i'm under contract for two more books for the captain seriously project so okay i'm very employed there um but also i've got you know last year i had a lot of fun doing that book pitch the baron von bear pitch and i'd like to get at least you know two more pitches done this year someplace in between all this stuff and uh and I'm continuing on with this web comic with Dan Michigan, the Amazon Academy. That's one that I'm doing. I guess that would be a hobby, right? Because I'm not getting money for that. So I'm doing that for the, the joy of creating with a friend and hoping that somehow it gets momentum enough that we can make some money off of it, right? Uh, so that's an interesting point. It's, um, are you... Are you tearing like are you how do you feel about that sort of speculative business yet hobby like endeavor um or do you do you feel like it's appropriate to call it a hobby because i mean it seems like it's more of a speculative business endeavor it's a speculative business endeavor sure right um yeah. uh, it, it's it's ho a hobby only in the technical sense that i don't get any money out of it and um I do derive a lot of personal pleasure from doing it, right? So, so yeah. So I would no, you don't get a lot of money out of it yet, um, yeah. but that's you know, like sometimes investing in strategic business development, it doesn't have that immediate turnaround. This is why businesses struggle with strategy, and mm. it's like, well, why do we want to think so much about the future when I'm panicked about whatever we report next quarter to our yeah. stakeholders? or yeah. investors or what have you. And even as individuals, we run into that where it's, it's really hard to be like be fired up and profitable and somehow maintaining some extra capacity for um, the things that come up and what you're already putting your attention to, but then also the things that uh, you don't know what for sure. And then you, you, you can have speculative endeavors that are, that are some kind of amount of investment, right? that mm -hmm. you know you can afford the investment and uh, but it's yeah it's strategic and it's still developing your business um anyway yeah interesting. no that, no that, that that's 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 good pushback and reframing of, of what i'm describing here yeah um because it is the the goal of the project is we're not doing it just purely for fun i mean we enjoy doing it but the the goal there is an explicit goal between the two of us is to find somebody who wants to publish this work you know um, so, and then, you know, I put as like a, maybe like, let's see how the, the year shakes out, um, sort of a, uh, I would like to do another mini comic this year in some way. Um, and you know, mini comics day is in March and you remember mini comics day. That's the day oh, where you March. Okay. Yeah. It's in March. I think it's like the second Saturday in March. I think it's like the 14th, I think, oh. um, but yeah, I'd like to do something for a mini comics day this year. And, you know, I've been trying to think about like, as we, you know, it's only a couple months away. Um, how can I hack the game to do something that is a shippable, like pretty decent mini comic? One year I did um, a mini comic that I've actually sold in my um, tiny astronaut store, uh, which is fish don't some fish don't have teeth. It's the sort of like a prequel story from the Boulder and Fleet comics, where f before Fleet met Boulder, she was a manager of a tag team uh, wrestling team. Um, and I did that in the eight hours of mini comics day. I'm like, I'm so I'm trying to think like, well, can I do that again? But like, make a new mini comic to like continue on with all these like animal stories that I like to do. Um, this is such a perfect example. I mean, you all you very frequently turn creative challenges into product product development yeah it's, yeah that's uh, it's impressive like you were able to turn those into you know products that's 
um, which is an approach that seems to work for you and pretty consistently. Yeah, I do. I do enjoy that a lot. I get a lot of personal satisfaction and value out of like trying to work within those constraints to generate something that I can also, you know, put on my table and sell and use as evidence of my of my uh, competence. So, I mean, and and I mean, there's an element of, well, okay, this is also getting me to generate and explore creative ideas that I intend to turn into pitches and potential projects someday. You know, um, that's also one of the goals. There's there's a lot of a lot of like parallel and intertwined intention built into how I engage with those creative challenges. It's and yeah, and so it to me it 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 fills the the it wears the hat of a hobby quite a bit, right? Because I feel that way with a lot of my endeavors. I mean, one of my only interests that I, I'm not really trying to monetize right now directly is um, playing guitar. But then again, I'm making guitar fretter. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it, it's, it's a blurry topic, the whole that, that hobby thing. Because it's, it, you're, doing, you're doing, let's see, you have a... Um, pipeline of products that you're developing and they could have different futures like so they that things come out like uh you know i'm i have so many more it was hard to filter that list as unfiltered as my list is it there's more things mm -hmm. that i would like to put on there which would include uh taking some products that i have in my pipeline of and and then putting them back in like it, it's come out and it's like ah i could do a better version of this improved in color or new format whatever and anyway so is that part of that so do you see do you see those products as they come out and all your history of those kind of products that you've built up is like well they're done and like that's the thing that you're looking to trade or is it it could feed into and morph into other future products it could feed into and morph yes yeah okay. Um, and, and one of the things I mean, thinking about right now is like, so I, like I have a, a personal theme of, I really am attracted to doing, uh, adventure stories for young people featuring animal characters like that. That seems to be, and that, that, that's a pretty broad description, but when you look at the, the, the comics I have for sale at tinyastronaut.com, like that, that tends to be the vibe that's going on there. That, that, that's the, you pick up on the theme. So can I do product development where any one of these could be a vector to getting me to tell all those stories, right? You see what I'm saying? So like, so like, for instance, it's like, okay, well, Boulder and Fleet, I can't find any traction for it. Well, let me take Pickles and Taft, this other mini comic I did, and let's take this new character, Baron Von Bear, and put them together. And if that works, and if I can find a place for that to land, now I've got something where if it turns to a series, I can do lots of stories where all these other animal characters that I've done product development on can find their way through this particular narrative, right? So it's it's more like I've got this idea of animal adventure stories. Let me see if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like sort of um, play test with like five or six different characters and see which one really registers with people, right? And then that can be the inroad to doing it all, right? That That's how I'm personally thinking about it right now. Who knows if that's going to happen, right? But that's, for now, that's my strategy. Seems like a pretty interesting strategy. And uh, it's like worthwhile. Like you think, it's like developing sort of your, like a go-to art style. And I mean, that's essentially developing a, um, a component of how you make products and then using that to make pro a bunch of products and find out what works with the market. So yeah. I don't know. That's, that's pretty cool. Except doing that with actual, um, you know, the ideas and property that, that you own that you can, uh, yeah, yeah. Use to lift one another. That's yeah. Yeah. And then that way I, the thing, so what I've, what I've fallen victim to in the past is I've gotten really in love with a specific concept and really wanted to do that over all else. But now it's like, well, let's back away. Let's just fall in love with genre or like a collection of tropes and ideas. And let's see all the different ways we can express that. And if one of them catches on, then boom, you're off and running and now you're doing what you like to do. Um, but instead of trying to sell this one particular idea, right? Like with Boulder and Fleet, I got really hung up on like, I wanna do a story that explores the idea of uh, nonviolent solutions to problems in a high octane action adventure story. That's the thing I wanna do. Well. 
I haven't had a lot of success with that. I mean, I had some, but like not to the point where it's like, hey, I'm paying all the bills now. Um, so, okay, let's back away. What, what is it you like about this thing? Well, I like these elements. Well, can you explore them in another way? And and then maybe you'll get to go come back and tell that other story. So anyway, hmm. um, that's how I've engaged with Fun it. Strategy. like it. Are we at a point where we should take a break? I feel like we are. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that makes sense. We talk about halfway. It's more metaphorically halfway. <laughs> We're hoping a couple of eagles pick us up and drop us off at the volcano here. Hooray for flexibility. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to come back in about a minute and a half, and we'll explore more of this goal planning, maybe from a little bit more of an abstract point of view, maybe look at a little bit more of the reasons behind our thinking. Uh, but before we do that, we got to thank some people who make this show possible. Those people are the people who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash lean into art is the website. What is Patreon? If you haven't heard of it yet, and it's okay if you haven't. You know, we all engage the internet in different ways. It is a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. It is a way, it is, it's a mechanism by which you can say, I believe in Robin Jersey and I believe in what they do. I want to make it more sustainable for them. How can I financially support this thing in a, in a way that's sustainable for both of us? Well, you can contribute as little as a dollar a month to help make this show more sustainable. And we want to thank five people who have been doing exactly that. First up, Greg Horvath. Thank you, Greg, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Greg on Twitter at IGM. Horv77, two sevens. Becca Hilburn, thank you, Becca, for supporting us for so long. Uh, you can find Becca on almost all social media at Natto Soup, also on YouTube. And Mike White, Mike White, you can find on Instagram under, under Mike White Robot. Thank you, Mike, for believing in us and what we do. And Merjam, thank you, Merjam, for supporting the show. You can find Merjam on Twitter at M Y R J A M V D V. These will all be linked in the show notes, too. You don't have to memorize these right now. You just go to the show notes and click on these links. And finally, Catherine Sugru. You find Catherine on Twitter at cat with a K S O O G R O O. And you can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art, where you will find all the shows we make as well as the extra leans, the shows we only record for people, for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe place with fellow leaners. Patreon.com slash leanitoart is the website. Thank you to everybody who has been supporting us there. It means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. It really does. Thank you so much. Okay, now I need some I need some really awesome music to get us into the second half of the show. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, yes, yes. And here we are, second half. So, learning goals. What do we want to learn this year? I want to learn how to find the Dragon Balls, personally. <laughs> uh, other than that, yeah, I've got a few things, but I would like you to go first this time, this half. Okay. Yeah. I structured my learning goals under the three categories of the work that I want to do. So, if I'm going to do this work, what do I hope to you know, how, what what intellectual, emotional um, skill gains do I hope to achieve through doing this? Um, so when it comes to teaching, um, now that I've got this new job at the Columbus College of Art and Design, where I feel like we're very in tune with, we're, we're very much in alignment in terms of what we hope to achieve through this uh, arrangement of, you know, my working with them. And so I want to continue to experiment with my classroom experiences. You know, I t when I told them, like, I don't teach the same class over and over again, I'm constantly fiddling with it and messing with it and treating it like a laboratory. And when I saw that they got excited about that idea, I was like, okay, this is a place where I'm going to be able to, to do the work that I, I find personally rewarding and interesting. And that set off an alarm bell that we talked about last week, um, where it's like, I realized that this is a very lucky arrangement that I landed into. And there was part of the discussion was me bringing them more up to speed with the kinds of work I have done and the spirit behind the work I have done. And that's fine once you got the meeting. But I realized that my website needs to be, it's, so, it's sorely in need of updating to make that kind of work and the mission behind it very explicit so that I can continue to attract this kind of high quality matching that I've encountered with this job. Um, and and filter out people so that so I don't have to spend as much time 
in a conversation to say like, oh, okay, well, yes, while this would be very rewarding, I don't think we're going to be as good of a match in terms of spirit and mission. Um, I've had instances where I've worked with organizations where they've literally said, oh, you went two minutes over. You know, that's unacceptable. You can't have two minutes over in a, in a, in a classroom environment. I'm like, but they asked, and I literally, I turned them, I'm like, but they asked a really interesting question at the end that was worth exploring. Like, yeah, well, you know, we're on a tight schedule. I'm like, okay, well, if, if that, if your structure is that fragile, I'm not the person for you because I, I'm a person who's, I like the thing to change in front of me. I like to show up and say, here's my plan and have the room go, no, that's not happening. And I go, okay, what's going to happen now? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah what were you to well i just to? um oh, i i have uh i just react having a such a a tight facilitated schedule i've been the facilitator in that situation so i feel I've, i'm like Ugh, i feel like i might have done that to people before to be like uh, you know you two minutes but yeah. um but were they flashing up like um like cards or no, timing no, or they whatever, weren't, they weren't they doing of, me any hand signals like wrap it up know, or anything like that. It was like more like 10 minutes to go, with, five minutes to go. You no, know, they were um, sitting there with minute. a watch. They were sitting there with a watch and then it wasn't until after the session was over that they came up and they were like, Oh, too bad. That's Cause yeah. I do like, I kind of like that where I'm like 10, nine, you know, like I won't sit there and say it in that taunting way, but I'm beaming those thoughts. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, and, and I've been in those environments too where somebody's like they in the back room they hold their hand 5 minutes, you know, and I'll be like, "Okay, yeah. well, yeah, that, that gives me a sense of like if if the schedule's that pr uh precise." Just then, curious, sure. right? Because I was yeah. I, honestly, it's my own guilt and selfishness where I'm like, you know, is this <laughs> I feel bad about cuz you know, you that's you're offering some great stuff and and obviously there's this hopefully it's not a brittle system and and you can adjust the schedule a little bit. And then you also have people who grandstand and they eat up uh, agendas. And Absolutely. Whatnot. Absolutely. You know, and, and I'm not trying to, what I was trying to point out is that I wasn't a good fit for that environment. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and you made that point and it was, and it, I just wanted to take that down a, a little curious yeah. path. So yeah, no, yeah. I, I get that. It sounds like, so, right. That it's more about, um, yeah. I mean, so whatever you have and you're, you know, you've got some like learning, um, you know, you're, you're about to, you know, pour a, pour a cup of learning and they're like this far, no further. You put, you filled it past the line and now I have to dump it up. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, we were, we were talking about this, uh, in the last reading, watching playing is that like this, the, the, I think the reason that the movie Arthur Christmas is so appealing to me is that the plot of it is it's the battle between these two brothers who are both sort of operating as Santa in this, this fictional world. And the younger brother, who's a bit of a goofball, but really loves the spirit of Christmas is like a child got left behind and we got to get her her present because Santa doesn't forget about anybody. And then the other brother's like, yeah, well, that's horribly inefficient. We're, we're just like giving presents to billions of people. You know, it's like if I miss one out of, you know, nine billion, that's really not that bad, you know? And it's like the, the, this battle of like really dealing with the in, in, impossible logistics of the job with the spirit of the job. And I'm going to err on the side of like the spirit of the job right. every time. Yeah. Yeah. So, right, okay. All right. So, so, but that's not to say that you can't do it within a time frame. You totally can, and that's a reasonable. It's, it's not an unreasonable thing. It's just that I'm saying that, like, I'm going to push against that every time. <laughs> so yeah, and if it if it really matters, you can try to find a way for both perspectives to succeed by having some kind of communication and feedback mechanism, like someone's holding up a timing card or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And like at, at CXC this past year, I did a talk and teach session teaching the room how to use Clip Studio Paint. And it literally ended like this. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> like I talked right up to the moment they, they were walking toward me. And I was like, then I dropped like, okay, I'm done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so I can do it. It's just anyway. Um, so second category is advocacy. Um, this is an opportunity to learn more about my new home. You know, I've been in Columbus for almost a year now, and um, it is a fun challenge to uh, help a comics advocacy organization and, and try to find new ways to bring value to them by exploring and interacting with different agencies and advocacy groups and talking with them um, to find out what they're, you know, like, like things – there's a ton of arts advocacy groups in this town who are all operating in parallel paths, and can I find ways to bridge them? 
um, and thereby learn more about what these groups do and how I can provide value to them. So there's a lot of learning that needs to happen to like understand the network that exists and look for places where there that new connections can be made. Um, so that's something I'm looking forward to learning this year. And then with making comics, um, I want to continue to level up my pitching skills. I feel like the Baron von Baer pitch last year that I did was a breakthrough for me in that it proved to me that it can that I can do it when I have sufficient pressure behind me, and um, uh, that it wasn't the most unpleasant thing I've ever done. You know, I've often rebelled against this idea because I feel like selling myself is a drag. You know. <laughs> And having gone through that experience and come out with something that, like, I actually enjoy going back and rereading, I look at the Bear My Bear Pitch, I'm like, this isn't bad. This is pretty good. You know, um, it makes me feel like, okay, well, how much better can I get at it? I would like to get to the level where I can sell myself with the, you know, with like ninja like ease, not in a smarmy way, right? But like where I can do it where I don't feel like I'm forcing something out of myself and onto somebody else. It's more like I'm, it's it's become a natural reflex to very deftly and gently point to the value that I can bring to a situation. That's something I like to get better what a, at. What a yeah, very useful practice. Um, feel yeah, I feel very similar. And I, I just was I'm wondering if um, part of growing with that is a matter of of taking it out, like kind of kind of like how you were describing how your relationship with the Boulder and Fleet pitch evolved into your new direction where it's, you know, there's a, if you have a broader agenda and then you just happen to be presenting an example of it and you're advocating for something. And so you're really seeking, so this is the whole puzzle of, and we, we did a whole episode on this, but it's the service minded marketing. Mm -hmm. I'm still struggling with this. And, uh, but like, I feel like slowly piecing together things and maybe it's just a matter of I'm hearing it enough. Right. So hearing and learning from your journey and, and, and also my own. Um, and is it that, is it going from the, the specific selling of me and this is the piece of me in my heart and I made it and you love me in my heart, right? <laughs> I'm not pushy. You're, you're not listening or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, you know, versus like, Hey, you like stories. I love to tell stories. Check this out. There's this awesome thing. Um, exciting, uh, adventures, cute animals, being brave. And um, you get to see this one, learn this huge life lesson, check it out, and uh, whatever. He, he, I'm selling you. So you're selling this agenda with a specific example, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in a way where I think like a, a, a byproduct of this approach that I didn't, it wasn't my intention, but I, it was a happy accident or a happy result of this approach is by using mini comics as a testing a hypothesis and then letting it go, right? So I did the Baron von Baron first mini comic two years ago, and then I was like, okay, I'm done with that. So I've, I've tested the idea. We'll turn it into a pitch later, turn it into a pitch, and then did it in 31 days and then let it go. Um, I don't feel quite as emotionally wound up in it. I feel like this is a an artifact of evidence of my capacity, capability, and competence. Um Will I be able to pull off the book as as the pitch proposes? Yeah, actually, I trust that I can. I don't know how. I don't have all the details worked out yet, but I I have the confidence and trust in myself that I can do it. But I'm not going to think about that right now. I'm just going to think about this little tiny artifact as this piece of evidence to suggest what I can do. Um, does that make sense? Whereas, like with the Boulder and Fleet pitch was so fleshed out when I the first one I did that got turned down. Um, I felt like I had put so much work into it and it was so specifically an instance of this is an idea that I have a lot of passion behind for these specific reasons. Whereas Baron von Baer is sort of like the promise of a bunch of ideas that I have a lot of passion for. Does that, did that I don't know if I made that it distinction. It totally makes clear. sense. I think it's a difference between, um, so as a small business person, as a person who is pretty much their whole business, right? Um, it's like you, you have to switch hats and I think there's, there's a certain cost to switching hats and depending on the, the mechanism you have set up to set up to support the, the switching of hats, like developing a product, essentially doing applied research and design where you've got to believe some hypotheses and some existing components that you're sort of rearranging and putting into this new thing and a product comes out of that. 
to go from that and to have the internal emotional energy and maybe financial readiness or whatever to be ready at that moment in time uh, would require yet another investment. And it's a new, different way of operating. You have to sort of switch gears, wear a very different hat. And are you ready for that? And what, you, what I hear you're describing is like, you don't have to be, you can set, you can, you can get to that, uh, a certain stage of completeness and then come back to it when you are ready, when you have the capacity. Yep. And um, that's, that seems pretty useful. Like, and um, like, it seems very reasonable. And, and like, if you, you, if you can have a longer view of the things that you're developing and uh, sort of the, the pipeline of all your creations, you know, there's a longer life cycle than just that one, um, one effort and the initial endeavor of bringing it into existence. Yeah. And that, that was a hard thing for me to like really gri come to grips with. Um, hmm. th there was, there was, I was still, and I didn't even realize it until, you know, I really sat down and, and, and journaled and thought about it is there was, a, I was doing a lot of subscribing to the idea of the visionary genius kind of approach of like, this is my vision and it's got to be in the world. I've, I've got to prove to everybody that every thought was carefully constructed in this thing and nobody can change it. And it's going to happen my way, that kind of thing. I, I wasn't saying it. I wasn't uh, expressing it in that way. But I think that that kind of thinking was informing how I was reacting to everything. Whereas now, I feel like it's more like, okay, we can generate just enough to suggest the idea and give a promise of what it could be. And then set it down. Let's look at some other things. Maybe that maybe that'll take. Maybe it won't. And if it does take, it's probably not going to be the same thing as I originally intended or or thought about because it's going to be informed by who I am now, the the the, the dynamics of the moment of the partner that I'm working with, with, with whatever publisher I'm working with, and so on. Um, and being okay with that, be okay that like it's still going to be something that like feels like something only I can do. Um, and you know, part of this could be informed by the fact too that like. I am, let me acknowledge the privilege that I'm experiencing right now in that I'm pretty employed this year. I have a lot of jobs. <laughs> so I don't have to be, like, this doesn't have to succeed, right? But so that's another, I guess another thing that I would put in a learning goal is learn how to continue to generate new material during a period of um, good employment so that when this time does go away, because ultimately there will be no more Captain Seriously books for me to do, um, then... I have a lot of other lines in the water, as it were. So, hmm. seems like a it seems like a pretty robust approach, and uh, like like very reasonable for someone who's like, yeah, I'm an independent creator, and this is my business, and how I sustain it is, you know, I've got the existing opportunities I need to serve, but then you know, you you've got to keep an eye on the horizon mm -hmm. as well. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So let's so, look at your learning goals. Okay. So I've got a lot to learn as usual. Um, there's, uh, let's see. So make, teach, and coach plus business and marketing. Um, because I think under the umbrella of make, teach, and coach, there are endeavors that uh, are repeating. It's, it's sort of like nurturing and growing an audience and serving the products and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think I, so I, 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 created a separate category for that. Okay. Um, so then uh, related to make, I'm, of course, I mentioned um, the Guitar Fretter Deluxe and I'm porting Guitar Fretter, as I've mentioned a few times, from the Corona SDK environment into Unity. Uh, Unity, uh, something I've dabbled with. If I look at my journal for a very long time and I haven't embraced it though for until... Mm, honestly, this last year, <laughs> mm. um, pretty, pretty begr begrudging. And cause I'm super picky and I could go off on that. And we did talk, talk about that quite a bit in a different episode of the lean into Artcast um, uh, this year. Anyway. So um, expanding my knowledge in, in uh, developing unity uh, based to two D games, two dimensional games, um, get guitar fretter deluxe shipped, whatever I have to learn to make that happen, make it happen. Um, I'm really excited about practice, improving, um, sort of bringing in different lessons and dabbling experiences, uh, experiments I've done for single illustrations and having a style or two 
that complement my other projects. Like I really need illustrations to su uh, supplement my projects like articles, workshops, and eBooks. Um, and I've got, I, honestly, this sort of chameleon hodgepodge of different styles that there is a me that kind of comes through in different places, but really, um, yeah, I'm looking to, instead of going to one of my go-tos, which is like a quick doodle and throw some color on it uh, to create a spot illustration for something I make, um, a blog post, what have you, I, I'd like to go a little further, you know, so maybe that could become its own thing. Maybe if I hit a good one, that goes into my poster store or whatever, right? Mm. Who knows? Because yes, you've, you've done like a uh, book cover illustration in the past. That's true. So yeah. Um, yeah. For those, I spend a lot more time. Uh, even, even in the case of the, like I had the, the four hour book cover experiment, uh, which we podcasted about as well. Uh, my, my entire uh, life on this episode is is just mentioning times we've uh, our prior. Episodes. <laughs> well, we have been doing this a long time now. Two hundred ninety nine episodes plus however many extra leans. A lot of our our, our lives are documented on this series. Yeah, yeah almost two hundred extra leans. I think somewhere in there. Good lord. <laughs> somewhere in there. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that that single illustration style. I've got a few uh, a few sub experiments I want to basically turn into a little playbook of. All right, I've got an hour to crank out a decent illustration. How do I make the most of it? Hit the ground running, make it happen, full color, mm -hmm. etc. Um, playful experiments. Um, I've recently uh, I've have a three D printer in my life, and that's that's interesting. So I'm I'm uh. You know, I've got little maker, playful repair and build things on my radar. And that's just about learning and enrichment. And it's just trying, um, trying new stuff. It's things that, um, like I mentioned last episode, I, I, I mean, I worked with um, some really talented engineers who knew electronics and also physical prototyping. I learned some physical prototyping and also some very basic electronics. I want to keep practicing that because I found it so enriching and fun kind of challenge, what have you. So um, no huge specific, it's very hobbyish, but it's development. Um, and then also I'd like to make uh, one to two book pitches. All right. Mm -hmm. Teaching, going to keep expanding and garden tending, figuring out what that is as far as my, my courses I offer on Skillshare and Gumroad. Um, it's not just a set and forget, but it's a, it's, it is a lower pressure thing. There's a huge buildup to making a workshop and then there's um, tending to it as it gets into the world. And then I need to figure out my rhythm for the tending to it that lights keep in touch over time. Uh, but also continuing, I've got, I've got a large list of potential future workshops and I want to make at least four next year. I made four this year. I can do that next year. Um, and then uh, I've got a lot of a uh, lot of writing topics I would like to delve into as well. That those feed into both some talks. I have two talks. One that's getting lined up for next summer and uh, for for a local event. But then I, I have one that has has been announced publicly. I'll be speaking at uh, Developer First um, mm -hmm. conference in the, the Minneapolis area. It's all about. Um, you know, people in technology who are becoming leaders and also teaching other leaders and whatnot too. And so for me, of course, I bring in this combination of, well, user-centered design and coaching and doing that also for your own, um, well, helping others with their career development as well. So mixing in the mentoring. So I'm giving a talk on that. Um, and of course, honing ideas through um, uh, writing articles. It's a great complimentary piece. And I think we talked about that a bit last episode as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, coaching, of course, I mentioned, uh, or, well, just working on the, the group of products and uh, packaging different options. And that's, uh, yeah, so some kind of retainer for uh, corporate clients that, uh, you know, would like someone to be available to uh, encourage and, and help others sort of walk through big creative or career choices. And hmm. I think that's a, I think that's a sellable thing and I'll be putting that together. Uh, and then of course the business and marketing things, gosh, I mean, there's so much that I, 
I've had on my goals list and have bombed almost 100% related to advertising. Um, I'm, I don't, I know that I am just personally stuck. Um, and I have a lot of, uh, I, I know it's a hard puzzle because I want to find a path forward through it that I believe in with all my being. And that's not easy because of a variety of things, the platforms that we use to, to share advertisement, um, the reasons that we need to advertise on platforms and how more or less you can gather an audience, but then you have to pay to access them. Um, I mean, there's a reason why Tyler James of the uh, Comics Launch podcast is a huge emphatic um, uh, believer and uh, very skillful person with mailing lists because, well, that is a connection that you directly uh, have with your audience and it's not mediated by the a social media platform, what have you. So anyway, lots of reasons, but I think I'm, I'm coming up with new ways to look at it. So um, I shared some of these thoughts last November during the Art Sound Off Creative Challenge on my podcast, The Polytechnicast. Um, these social networks are where we meet each other. It is our common ground. It is our commons. It is our space where we connect. Unfortunately, we meet a lot of trolls and robots too. Mm -hmm. We got to try to tell us from the trolls and the robots apart and, and, you know, work through that. But that's our neighborhood. This is the, this is where we're living right now. That's part of our digital reality. So how do I make the most of that in a um, service minded way? And I think within reason, it just acknowledging that it's a rough neighborhood. We're going to try to make it better. I'm going to try to help by making useful things in the space, which I realize has a negative side effect, which creates more engagement, which drives openness and opportunity for other negative behaviors. But what can I do, right? Um, what if we made enough positive behavior and shun the robots? Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I've got to find that path through because this is where I want to connect with more people. I know that's where they are. And I know mm -hmm. that's one way to do it. And I intend to use it. So quick question. Have you, I don't know if you pay attention to this, I mentioned this podcast before. It's called Team Human. Oh, it's so familiar. I think you have mentioned it. I have mentioned it in the past. His latest episode, it's funny you should bring this up, because his, his latest episode uh, is he spends a little bit of time talking with a guy named Christopher Boozy who who made a plugin for Chrome uh, called Human Trollbots, and it's like it's something that's supposed to help you uh, identify whether or not content was generated by a machine or a person. Um. But it, it the the whole the whole premise of the Team Human show is very much in line with what you were describing of like okay these these are commons and we have to find his 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 um sort of his call to action he uses on his show is find the others <laughs> find find the other humans you know um and he's he's a bit of a wild guy he's he's uh i think he's like a upper gen xer uh but he's like he 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 talks like he's really informed by the ethos of like the the wild and woolly 60s kind of thing um and i really enjoy how weird he can get sometimes um but anyway he he i just you reminded me of of i had just finished listening to that episode um it's teamhuman.fm uh for folks who want to check it out but but yeah, it, 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 it it's an ongoing show addressing this this very problem of like how do we continue to connect in a world where the commons is being um, assailed by bots and people who are uh, not operating in good faith, and then also the algorithms are deciding what we see and what we don't see. So, anyway, um, yeah, it's quite a puzzle, and I don't, I I'm convincing myself that it's a worthwhile endeavor to um, struggle through it, struggle through my own feelings and to, to not disengage. Because one, one way to do, one way to approach it, which I have, um, I mean, every year after I stop publishing my webcomic, I, pub I, I post less overall. Um, and it took me forever to ramp up, to be willing to stand up and say, I make this and I do these other, other things and whatever. And so there was you know, and over the course of, um, yeah, and, and it's during these, uh, the very 
uh, explosive, poisonous times of um, abuse of humans and groups who utilize bots, right? Because it's not just the bots. The bots don't show up sentient, like they don't grow and then show up on their own. People make that. People pay for the bandwidth, the servers, the the, the coding, the data, the, you know, like, it's not like a natural thing. It's not like mold, right? Or, right. yeah, it's not occurring in the, in the, in the overall natural ecosystem yet. It's, it's not an, an emerging technology the space. Yeah. yeah. It's a reality of the digital space. And it's maybe mm -hmm. it's, there's some, it's due to natural forces and tendencies and urges in, regarding how humans interact with um, power and opportunity. But, um, but I don't have to sit back. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, pr I'm privileged to either choose to sit back or to not. And so I really want to not, and, and this is, and, and I'm, this is a, a not trivial thing for me. So that's why I'm, I'm sharing a bunch more thoughts on this because um, I've really struggled with the, with the marketing thing. And like, Same I know here. what mechanisms exist. Absolutely. Uh, I think we have had very similar uh, struggles with this, this topic and uh yeah, yeah, that'll be another one that'll be fun to learn and more get more adept at, build more skill in in 2020. Yes. Um, all right. And that well, that pretty much covers my learning goals. So, so, do you want to do for final thought? What do you think about doing the um, the five years from now exercise that is mentioned in your uh, workbook and your workshop, which we're going to talk about in a second? Okay, that sounds good. Let's let's visit that. See where it goes. We'll visit it, and yeah, we'll see if we can briefly engage with it just to model what that looks like and how we think about it at any rate. So, mm -hmm. okay, so in about a minute, two minutes, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a little exercise where we look at what the world looks like for us in five years if everything goes the way we hope. So before we do that, we gotta thank some more people who make this show possible, and those people happen to be us. We make this show possible. We make things and we bring the thoughts that occur to us while we're making the thing to the show. And the thing that I make that I hope you will engage with and check out is a podcast, another podcast that I do called Four Million Years Later. Is it a paleontology podcast? No, it is not. It is a Transformers podcast. And it is a show where me and an old friend of mine who, with whom I have been talking about Transformers on the phone once a week for 25 years, we finally sat down to do an episode by episode exploration of the series. So we watch an episode a week and then we get together and talk about what we saw and bring all of our sort of formal and informal analysis to it. Um, and I wouldn't call it a critique show, but it's like it's like a, a, an intellectual celebration of a show that was made for children and to sell toys in the 1980s. And episode five just dropped, which is actually, if you check out one episode from the series, this is the one to check out if you like listening to me express joyful enthusiasm, because it's one of my favorite episodes of the Transformers. And it is an episode where Prowl, the um, military strategist Autobot, gets damaged in battle and has to go on the internet to get help in 1984 and finds a young computer genius who just happens to be on the internet who can then take control of his body and fight the Decepticons for him. Um, episode 5, roll for it. And that's at 4millionyearslater.com. Rob, let's talk about your workshop. All right. Sounds good. So, um... I, I have a workshop and a workbook that Jersey mentioned early on that I co-created with, uh, you know, this wonderful creative partner who happens to be my wife, uh, Kate Shield Stenzinger. Um, we do a podcast uh, called uh, the um, Art and Science Punks. And a lot of times when we're on podcasts or talk about the different topics, the goal the topic of goals comes up. We're really interested and passionate and experimental. We find a lot of different ways to, and, and have honed and revised different ways of going about goal planning and stuff throughout the years. And so what we have is this, this, um, well, a workshop and a, and a workbook that really embody that, like our favorites and the, of this whole approach of you want to, um, create some kind of plan, this intention of where you want to go and um, be, be able to describe it quickly and easily because you can have so much. It can be such this overwhelming thing, especially when it's inside your head. Um, different activities uh, you can, you can embark on there in a way they're, they're sort of little um, creative challenges or they're 
um, ex let's see, they're um, writing channel experiments or what have you, but they, they'll sort of add up as, as these well design activities to create this pretty holistic picture that's easy to approach for you. And if you want to share and invite others to come on and help you with your mission uh, to do things like, uh, well, let me describe some activities, things like, well, your life in five years, uh, the gratitude and support exercise, your adventure map, uh, writing a day without fear, and uh, your passion pitch, or then finally your reminder word. All of these serve as different mechanisms to either uh, think broadly or think narrowly. And when you combine them all, we think it's a fairly robust system. And you can use this whole thing, honestly, for free by downloading the Where Next Journal workbook at um, gumroad.com, uh, gum.co slash WNXTJ. It's available for free. Now that's the Oh, WNXTJ is the Where Next Journal. Uh -huh. Wait, no, not... It, <laughs> I apologize for like being so slow on the uptake on this one. No worries. It's, you know, it's uh, acronyms. Your mileage <laughs> may vary. <laughs> so um, it's okay. The uh, there's the free version, but then there's a, that's the 10 page version, but then there's a 30 page version that has more of more guidance and, and warmups and facilitation. That's the, the, the robust $5 version. So if you, uh, you can, choose to to get either of those at that URL I mentioned. But then there's also a video workshop where you're you don't have to be alone in looking at these pages and thinking, you know, what could this look like or could I get more examples or or I wish I could hear the voice of the authors or what have you. Well you can. So there's a workshop called goal setting using design plus storytelling. And that is that includes both the videos and the 30 page where next journal. So that is at gum.co slash gsuds also mm. that is available on skillshare if you do a search at skillshare.com for me rob stenzinger you will find the different courses and the different classes i offer which includes this one i co-facilitated with kate shield stenzinger goal setting using design plus storytelling six empowering design activities all right all right, so the last thing that I hope you'll check out today is the Lean Into Art Discord. Yes, we have a forum. It's a, you can use the Discord app, and we have an invite link in the show notes. There are various channels that you can engage with. Uh, there's the three publicly open channels, and there's three channels that if you are a supporter on Patreon, you have special access to. And uh, it's a place where you can, you know, talk about uh, ideas ex explored in past episodes. You can give us suggestions of topics you'd like us to take on in the future. You can share some of your work in progress. And some if you're taking on some various creative challenges, share some of that work. And we will engage with it there. It's been a lot of fun to talk with people uh, between shows on the Lena Tart Discord. So once again, the links will be in the show notes. So, ah, final thought time. Mm. Five years from now, explain this concept. This is in the workshop, which I purchased, and I got the the workbook. So, but uh, so just to you know, I'm I'm not only a uh, what, what is it? I'm, I'm trying to think of the Remington ad. Uh, I like the product so much. I bought the company, but I didn't buy the company. I just bought the product. <laughs> like, well, that's that's revolutionary nowadays to actually <laughs> yeah. buy a product. That's that's true. <laughs> I gave, yeah, I, I, I traded this for money. Um, well, it's, which thank you, thank you for doing that. By the way, you you know that you didn't have to do that, but then there's mm. that's that's within your framework and your approach. So that's <laughs> awesome. Um, so the life in five. Um, there's mine filled out. Go ahead and zoom in on that if you want. Pause, freeze frame, <laughs> what have you. Good luck. Um, <laughs> that uh, let's see. This is all about getting into um it's like it's design fiction it's saying that where do you want to be in five years and describe that in a variety of ways and so part of the warm-up process that we have in um in the where next journal if you have the the 30 page version of it it's you know let's get out some of your hopes and fears or your your questions thoughts and fears about this activity um and and so like that could come up like things that you're really stuck with but then, you know, do a bit of brainstorming about like, 
goals. It's, it's like, it's like those, um, it's, it, it's such a funny metaphor because I don't think it happens anymore, but you remember like watching kids programming when there would be special, um, what, what would you call it? There's a shopping spree where you could try to fill a cart at Toys R Us with any, everything you can fit in the darn thing. Yeah. I wanted one of those so bad. I, for no, I don't know why I had, I had enough toys. It wasn't, you know, but, right, right. But, but what, it, what it, it was, yeah. Freedom, freedom and gluttony. <laughs> As only a child could imagine. A shopping cart full. Well, that could get you so far. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's it's a large space that a child could imagine anyway. But yes. So this is this is so doing do that, that for your, for your life. Yeah. yeah. Shopping spree for your goals. Dump them um, all in there. Yeah. Don't fill it with the the big drafts. Um what does it look like? Uh so then then to, uh creating a vision of it too. So getting attached uh to the picture of where you would want to be being able to really see yourself. I mean, there's, I think there's a reason why um, we have concerns about uh, in stories, we want to have, you know, people that, that are like us in some way we can identify with or what have you. So like, well, it's, it's you in the future, you know, identify with this um, in, in pictures or what are some things that this would look like and then go about the actual um, do some creative writing and saying, well, what if you know, that you could not fail. This is a classic question, right? Well, if you couldn't fail, what would you like? What would your life look like in five years? What would you do? Mm-hmm. And then there's a, the good old money, money question. Uh, what if money was not a design constraint for your life? What would that look like? And mm-hmm. what does it feel like to allow yourself success in areas of your life? You probably tell yourself, you know, reasons and ration, rationales why. Um, you're at a certain point and what if you let go of those and what would it feel like? Um, so maybe, uh, could be a lot of things could be like where you choose to live or could be, um, you know, your, your, your pets arrangement, or I don't know, like what are the things that, that, that you sort of, you know, can set aside and what would it feel like to allow yourself success in all the areas that you're, you're envisioning. Mm. And then the final exercise is to just go for it, right? What your life will be like in five years. And this is the thing as though it already happened. So you're now you're now you're writing the future and looking back at you, right? This is, mm-hmm. yeah. So this is future you in a way writing a letter to present you. And there you go. That's the life in five exercise. It's funny. I, I didn't realize until I was engaging with the workbook that I've actually done this before. I did it when I was in high school. Uh, we had a creative writing teacher who had us write a letter to ourselves that was not to be delivered to us for five years. And it was written. Uh, it was a, it was but it was sort of the other direction. It was like sort of me talking to my future self saying like, boy, oh boy, I can't believe you did all this awesome stuff. Good for you, kid kind of thing. Um and it, because I was 17 at the time, I wrote that like, oh, your best friends with Stan Lee and you draw Spider-Man now. Because <laughs> that's what I awesome. thought success looked like yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I remember they actually hung on to the letters and then gave them back to us five years later, which was pretty impressive. Um, anyway. That's pretty great. So yeah, so you're writing a, a letter to yourself. So what? I mean, is there, could you give us like a, a sanitized version of what your yours looked like or, or or are you not comfortable sharing that on the show uh let's see are there any shareable bits i guess i should say so yeah i mean it's um it's more data ish than prose and i think i Mm. would like to take this rough draft and turn it into prose but okay um because there's sort of uh one two three four five five uh headlines one of them is career profession and it's the um yeah yeah, here it goes uh i make teaching coach with games of tools and occasional consulting coaching directly to this is garbage writing to help existing and upcoming creative powerhouses make prolifically and very profitably my audience cares and shares their time and attention and money with me seeking me and what i make me me Mm. me hi well yeah 
It's your life in five years, not mine. I know. My life in five years. I know. It's uncomfortable territory. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I think that's worth modeling, though. I think that's worth demonstrating on the show is that this is this gets into weird areas where we're not a lot of us aren't accustomed to thinking in this way. Um, and there's for me, there's a fear of even writing it out because I just feel like there's something. Uh, what am I trying to say? There's some, uh, what's the word? Megalomania. Uh, there's something megalomaniac about like saying, <laughs> this is the future I foresee, right? You know, like, and I know it's not. I know it, it's more of like just getting me to spit out what I actually want to have happen with the understanding that, you know, like when I make a lesson plan, it's like, this is what I'd like to do. We'll see what happens. <laughs> there's going to be like various kinds of frictions and engagement that happens on the way to that thing, but at least it gives me a star to steer by. Um, but there's something about like stating in that way that like feels it 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 was work for me to engage with this, mm -hmm. you know. And so so I had you know it's like wow hey I'm in I'm in the process of writing you know my third book in a series about these uh, animal adventure characters and I'm on I'm on tour uh, visiting you know all sorts of schools to tell kids about my book in a way that is helpful to them because kids are reaching out to me expressing how you know my stories are helping them navigate all these difficult issues that they're encountering going through you know playground bullying and so on and uh, so I'm, I'm doing a, a very broad approach with the school visits but I'm still maintaining some kind of channel locally at home where I'm doing like one-on-one -on -one mentorship with kids and an ongoing class where I'm you know working with groups of 20 or 30 kids at a time um, somehow managing those two things. Um, interesting that I didn't wind up getting it very much in there in terms of the advocacy work. So that, that gives me a signal that I wonder if like that is something that I'm going to start like peeling back from in the years to come. I don't know. But like, those are the big ones for me. The, like the big ideas were is that I've got, I'm in the middle of a series of books and kids are connecting with them. I'm visiting kids around the country and at home. But I haven't finished. I haven't finished like plotting yeah. through all of it. So I, I totally need another. So I'm hearing you, you. What you're describing is that in the, you know, in the initial ver version you created, maybe there's pieces that are missing, and I yep. think that makes a lot of sense. Um, yep. And uh, yeah, I think I will. I completely need to do another draft of mine. <laughs> mm. It's. Uh, I made sure I got through it, you know, for the for the podcast because. Um, and it actually kind of fit my, 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 in recent years, the, the goal planning process that, uh, so it, many years ago, Kate and I would be done by now. This would be mm -hmm. like all of our goal planning rituals would be done totally. You know, we'd have our big poster of, you know, a, a, a poster sized sticky note hanging up somewhere in our house. And we would see it every day and all that kind of stuff. We're still, we're still, we're working toward that. It's all the ritual is still there, but it's sort of expand has expanded over weeks and weeks. Cause we include our kids. We, we do, I don't know, maybe we have more experience to mine and it takes longer. I don't know all sorts of things, but this, um, the, and part of it too, is that um, it's not a perfectionism thing, but it's the good enough draft thing where it's like, if you read that, goal or set of intentions and however you're envisioning it and you go oh wait a minute you got your reactions yeah it's worth a quick update mm -hmm. yeah. get it to the you know just good enough to be like okay i feel good about this could be better but okay well I, i'm another prompt that i haven't fully processed that i really like and because it, it, the reason i haven't fully processed it because it, it was a big question is like what does it look like feel like to allow yourself success in all areas of your life all areas Right. And so that got me thinking about like, OK, well, yeah, what does a day at home look like? Right. I described sort of like a broad view of, of the work that I, I find very valuable and rewarding. But like, what does it look like to be at home? And, you know, what does, you know, my domestic life look like? Because um, those are goals, too. <laughs> yeah. So, so did you actually do that one? Yeah, I, well, I, I'm in the process of it, like, and I've I've been brainstorming a lot of things because, like, well, also this hits me at a really good time because I'm having just moved to Columbus. Anne and I are house hunting, right? So, and house hunting means, uh, what area are we going to live in? 
Is it going to be this neighborhood or that neighborhood? We're going to be close to work, far away from work. What kind of houses are over here? What kind of houses are over there? What can we afford? Uh, with what's available in these areas. Like, okay, well, this this neighborhood is like a bunch of 80 split level homes. This area is a whole bunch of like 1920s like flips. Um, you know, and, and I I walk into this, and this was where like prompts like yours get me thinking a little bit harder because I walk in going like, look, as long as I got a place to make messy art, as long as I can get paint on the floor in a room and not be worried about it, I'm happy. Well, are you? <laughs> Or have you not fully examined the question, right? So, <laughs> so yeah. So, like, this is hitting me just the right time where it's like, I, I got to think about this because it's conceivable that we're, whatever house we get will be in for a long time. So let's make sure that we get the one right. Well, how do we get it right? Well, we examine what we actually want in the next five years. So. Uh, that's, it's, and isn't that funny? And so there, I don't think there is like a hyper intense deadline for goals. Like this is a conversation of your intent with, with yourself and your intentions and potentially those who you are, who are your companions in your life circumstance. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even that, like um, I'm just barely getting through my individual process and now I'm looking forward to working through the, the, our, our couples process planning stuff. Yeah. And, same uh, here. Yeah. It's and Ann and I started watching the videos from your workshop together. So like that's underway as well. So <laughs> cool. Fun. A lot of side eyeing going on as we're like, yeah, what are our goals on this? We haven't talked about this one. So yeah. It's interesting. Oh, I look forward to hearing your reactions and feedback. We'll do. Um this uh let's see. I, I, I could read what I have here. It's not, uh, I, I don't know. What does it look like, look, feel like to allow yourself success in all areas of your life? Um, it feels freeing and at the moment intimidating. It looks like seasonality to work and rest and time to re recharge, to naturally return to output and serve mode. Choose and to close and loving relationships with Kate, kiddos, friends, amazing dates and talks and times with Kate. Creative, service and expression, in demand, sought after, well fun, finance funded, something. My handwriting, what can you do? Uh, <laughs> ability to keep iterating and investing, make, build in all areas of home and lifestyle. So not exactly clear prose painting a picture of like a, like a future vision, right? So I live in my hover ball, which brings me to the gym at 5 a.m. every morning and you know, then my robot, Chucky, says, <laughs> Chucky, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, it could be that. It could be that. But like, I would advise, well, advise, am I offering advice? I'm not going to offer advice. I would, I would offer up an, an alternate image of, this is just like when I'm thumbnailing. Thumbnailing is not about getting the picture in full focus. Thumbnailing is giving a very fuzzy sort of image where I'm almost half hearing the conversations. I've described it a hundred times is like, I'm, it's like when I'm doing my sticky note thumbnails, it's like I'm listening to a conversation through a wall. I can get the gist of what the, what the feelings and the tone and the emotions and the cadence of the conversation is, but I don't know all the details. I don't know what the address of the street that they're talking about is, but I know how they feel about it. Right. Um, I, that's how I'm engaging with this is like, like sort of letting it be out of focus if that's the way I need to express it right now, because that's the first draft of getting to where the thing is more crystal clear to focus. Dude, I think we just made a podcast. Did we? All right. I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you for this one, Rob. This was good. And we still got to figure out what we're going to do for episode 300 because that's next week. That's, that's, that's what they call a milestone. Um, if anybody has any input on that, you could email us at leanitsward at gmail.com or you can message us at the social media that we're going to mention in just a second. But uh, we record the show Thursdays, usually at noon Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central. And then we stream it live on twitch.tv slash leanintoart and collect us a podcast at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash leanintoart. We'll be back with episode 300. Until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com and I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. 
You can also follow us on Twitter at the user Lean Into Art, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.